Patty Stalker here from Westford Cat, and I am with Ellen Rainville, director of the J.D. Fletcher Library in Westford, and she's got uh, some updates for us on several things, which is uh, one would be the reopening of uh, the J.D. Fletcher Library, the wrap-up of the summer reading program, and the latest status on the champion oak tree. How are you, Ellen? Wonderful, Patty. Thank you so much for having me, and we're, we're thrilled. Um, to still be serving Westford despite all of the challenges of the pandemic and COVID-19. Um, we have been doing curbside pickup at the rear door since June 1st. And uh, thanks to the friends, we have a wonderful browse tent and youngsters and families can book the browse tent and we'll bring out whatever genres or book bundles or um, videos such as Walt Disney, um, we will bring out to you so that you can check out outdoors in the fresh air. And uh, one week ago today, on the 5th of August, we had a very soft reopening. Um, we are having appointments for 10 patrons through the library at 11 a.m., noon, 1 and 2. Um, we're offering 44 hours a week of curbside, but we're holding our appointments down. Uh, 11 a.m. is for uh, seniors and high-risk population. And so for 45 minutes, you can browse through the library. And um, then every 15 minutes at the very end of the hour, we will re-disinfect and let another group in. Um, the library does have many of the hallmarks that people are seeing everywhere, which is plexiglass, floor decals, one-way arrows, um, all of those things we're seeing in the commercial venues. And um, we are running into the stacks and getting things for people rather than let everyone walk through all portions of the library. So, um, you know, it's, that makes it a very personal service that's not quite as satisfying as a browsing service, but all of our study tables now are covered with new fiction titles and new nonfiction and biography titles and new DVDs. And our motto for the first time ever is please judge a book by its cover, because if you don't care for the book and set it aside, then we'll put it in a quarantine bin and we'll quarantine it for a few days. So, um, so that's a changed reality for a while, but um, there are still these many ways to take advantage of the library. So the safest way, which, you know, from March 15th on, um, we really did emphasize the downloadable books, Freegal, Music, Canopy, Movies, Hoopla, which is movies and books. Um, everyone now using their Westford card can actually get eBooks from all seven of the networks within the state and the Boston Public Library. So that's absolutely the safest way. And then again, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4, and Monday through Thursday, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., we're doing curbside and we're running books out the back door about every five minutes. And then Book the Browse Tent is also Monday through Friday, 10 to 4. So um, we're making it work and we're very slowly, um, you know, having our patrons back in the building. Um, in part because of the layout of the building. I think if, if we have, and we, we know that many of our um, avowed library patrons use more than one library, so they're going to see quite a mix depending on how a building is designed and how much maintenance staff a library has and how much staffing they have. So um, Groton is um, checking out the children through a lower story window, kind of like an ice cream window. Um, we're doing it under the browse tent. Um, a library like Chelmsford where they can close off the children's room actually has the children's room open. So there's quite a variety. Everyone is having to make decisions, you know, based on their own building and its limitations and its layout. Yeah, I, I saw that on the mass.gov website when I was looking up libraries and yeah, there's quite a bit of leeway there depending on, on what kind of building you have. It seems like you guys have it planned out pretty well. It's excellent. Yeah. And um, I was saying just before we went on um, the air that, you know, we're very grateful that we have such a good setup for curbside. Um, we can look down the stairs and see someone waiting. Um, we have a portico over the back 
rear entrance. So, you know, we will be doing curbside in our mittens and mufflers, you know, we will be doing curbside for the foreseeable future. And um, the Browse Tent, we're so grateful to have a lawn because we have a story walk along the lawn for children to read, you know, this huge book that has been taken apart and put along the uh, verge of the parking lot. And then we are also taking out book bundles and DVD bundles to the Browse Tent and checking out to families there. So even though everyone is masked for all of these different services, you know, we're very realistic about children's need to skip around and play and be outdoors. And we all are hearing um, that fresh air and ventilation is safer. So. Speaking of children um, and young adults and adults as well, the summer reading program uh, is wrapping up. I spoke with um, you and Christina back in June, and yeah. you had mentioned having, instead of the weekly uh, prizes or, or gifts, they you know, round them all up. <laughs> One big aggregated prize bag. So bags are the theme this year. And um, so this Saturday um, on the 15th from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., um, we will be sporting the uh, Alice in Wonderland costumes that we would have worn in um, the Apple Blossom Parade. And families and readers can drive through and honk and wave and we will have their prize bags and you can also pick them up under curbside. So um, we will have all the um, multi-week prizes all bagged up and ready to hand you through your car window. So we're having that and we're having the Toe Jam Puppet Band today actually. Um, I realize this might miss some of your viewers but um, we're having our final for the summer outdoor drive-in concert. So the friends um, purchased an AM transmitter for us. And what we've done is um, have attendees come to the library parking lot, stay in their car, in their pajamas, with their snacks and their goodies. And then our performer is transmitting from 1610 AM, which is WJVF still serving you on your car radio dial. And you can tune into it through your car radio or pop your back hatch and listen to it. And it's socially distanced and safe, but still a fun outdoor concert. And this might be an auger of how we'll be doing Mother Goose time um, starting in the fall as well, because all of our programs have gone virtual. As we were talking earlier, um, you may be using that same radio dial when you take down the champion oak tree. Yeah, yeah. So this, of yeah this is very poignant. Um, the oak has stayed, um, almost had one year's reprieve and we're thrilled for that. Um, we had a very uh, overextended uh, tree service that contracted with the town, but uh, now we expect the tree to come down around the 19th either wind or rain can make a change in that schedule. Um, we did take the opportunity to have the tree disease specialist from the UMass Extension Service come and do yet one more test on the champion oak. And um, so the findings you know, for this tree will go into a study of all the diseased and decayed trees in the Commonwealth. So we are thrilled that it could give that one last gift and um, yes, we will be saving parts of it. Yes, we will have some kind of souvenirs or a fundraiser from it. Um, those will be completely dependent on the quality of the wood or the branches or what we can keep. And we do hope you know, to leave um, a fairly high amount of the hollow stump. And you know, potentially this will be um, a reading bench or something in the future and we can have outdoor um, events out where the tree was. Oh, that's great. So you're going to actually keep a part of the tree to use. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a wonderful idea. As opposed yeah. to just a stump in the, in the yard. Yeah. So we, we hope to make that into some kind of reading or performing area. So what would people expect on the 19th? So actually, we're very grateful because First Parish Church United is allowing the contractor to bring the crane in um, across their parking lot. 
So the access to the tree will come from the front. Um, I think um, police cruisers and, and keeping uh, people from walking up and down the sidewalk and Main Street will be absolutely critical on that day. It should take a day or a day and a fraction. So, um, you know, the, the large branches will be coming down and some will be retained and then some um, will be chipped. And then um, we hope to keep some both for board feet and for potentially something like coasters. You know, if there's a like a four inch branch, you know, we might be able to slice it vertically. But um, green, even aged, even aged trees, you know, you have to let wood sit and season. So it will be a while before the tree has one final gift for us in the form of souvenirs. You have a busy couple of weeks ahead. You've had a busy couple of months behind you. It's been a trying time for everyone. And it seems like you guys are really, you know, stepping up and, and trying to just keep some sense of normalcy. And I know I've been using your online services um, all these months and they, they really are wonderful. They, and I they encourage are. people to to, try, to check you know, it out. I, I think it was the aging eye that got me really hooked on downloadable um, books because I could change the font and I could change mm -hmm. the coloration and I could change the brightness. And um, after a day of reading on the screen, I really find that's wonderful. But um, we still have people, you know, who want their actual physical books and we're able to deliver those. And, you know, we're being very careful. There's um, the library is also distanced um, in a way we've pulled out chairs and our meeting room is one third full of furniture, one third full of probably 14 to 15 book trucks, which are holding returns that are quarantining, 40 to 50 ILL bins that are quarantining. And um, so we, we have had to use our space differently. And, um, you know, it's a very staff intensive um, delivery to do curbside delivery, you know, instead of a patron walking down the aisle, choosing it themselves, bringing it over, you know, every single hold, we're printing it out, we're looking for it, we're bringing it back, we're interfiling it, we're checking it out, we're getting a phone call from the parking lot, we're running it down the back stairs, but it's wonderful. We're so, technology has definitely been a godsend, I think all of us know during this time. So um, we are very grateful, but you know, we also have a wonderful creative and enthusiastic staff and that has been you know, really um, a foundational benchmark through this entire uh, COVID season. You sure do have a great staff, Ellen, and um, it's pretty indicative of how well you guys get along that many have been there for decades. I mean, when I first moved to, to Westford um, back in 2000, and uh, always smiling, friendly, helpful, just a great staff, very, uh, yeah, I, I miss popping in and just saying hi, yeah. You know, and we, we miss our public too, and um, yeah, you know, it has been um, a, a really loyal staff with a lot of longevity, and, you know, just to, translate that into COVID terms some, it means more of us, even myself even, you know, more of us are high risk. So we're being, we're being cautious. We're trying to deliver as much service as we can. Um, and, you know, again, every library director is looking at how much maintenance staff do I have? How much staff do I have? How old is my HVAC system? You know, how can we keep people distance? How can we keep people safe? So, um, We'll keep expanding service, you know, if the numbers and um, and the infection rates allow that. But right now we're doing um, almost a full week's worth of curbside and and book the browse tent, and um, we'll we'll be doing that in our woolens. We're quite sure that that's our future for a while. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ellen, for the update on the library. And uh, why don't we check in again a little later? Uh, next month, you know, in the fall and see how things are going. Love to. We will talk some more. Okay, great. Thank you Thanks. so much, Thanks. Ellen. Ellen Thanks. Rainville, the director of the J.B. Fletcher Library. I'm Patty Stocker for Westford Cat.